In this example, we're going to use the vectors that we carefully constructed in the previous session and look at how we can model the banner that you can see here using the two rail sweep. So let's go to File, Close. So let's go and open an existing file. So from the project folder, we want to open the banner vector file. So we'll press open there. You'll remember these are the vectors that we created in a previous session. Now I just want to go into my file setup and just check a few things in there. Okay, so you can see we've got our modeling resolution set to standard. Now I want to do is bring that up to very high just so we optimize the resolution as this is a modeling exercise. I'm also going to change the appearance of that. We're going to change that to be Canadian maple and then I can press OK. Now before I go ahead and start modeling the banner, I'd like to just organize my file a little better. So what I'd like to do is select all of our rails and our cross sections and move them to a new layer. So I'm going to select our first rail, holding down shift, I'm going to individually select the other rails and then still holding down shift, I'm just going to box select those cross sections at the bottom there. So everything that I want is now selected. Now if I right mouse click and say move to layer, I can have the option to create a new layer. So I'm going to say new layer and we're going to call this layer sweep vectors. I'm going to make that invisible and inactive. So I'll press OK. We can see they've moved. So now we're just left with these vectors that represent the areas that we're going to crop our components to. So I'm just going to draw a box again just using the mouse to select all of those and we're going to right mouse click, say move to layer, new layer and then I'm going to call this layer outline vectors. Make that invisible and inactive and then press OK. So now if we go to our layers tab we can see we have three different layers. We've got our sweep vectors, and we've got our outline vectors. What I'd like to do is change the name of layer 1 and call that components. Okay, so now we have three different uh, layers. I want to make sure that my components layer is the active layer and we can see that it currently is as it's bold, it's switched on but the text is bold. That's telling me it's the active layer. So anything that I do now will sit on the components layer. So if I switch these on. So when we start to create our components now using vectors from different layers, whatever we create from those vectors are going to sit on the components layer. So let's go to the modeling tab. What I'd like to do is tile my windows horizontally so we can see the 2D view at the top and the 3D view at the bottom there. Now before I go and start creating components using the two rail sweep, what I'd like to do is help keep my component tree organised by renaming level 1. So I'm just going to right mouse click, rename that level, and we're going to call that level folds. So let's go and create our two rail sweeps. So I'm going to use the option to create a two rail sweep here. And the first thing we need to do is select our rails. So we'll select our first vector here, holding down shift I'm going to select my second vector then I'm going to use the option to use selection. So that's now transformed those vectors into drive rails. Now if we take a look at this rail here we can see the start point is at the top so our cross section is going to come in at the top and we can see that there's arrows pointing in the downwards direction so that's telling me that the cross section is going to come down in this direction here. If we look on the other side at our rail on the right, our start point is at the bottom. We've got arrows pointing upwards, so that's telling me the cross section is going to start at the bottom and it's going to be swept up. In this example, what we need ideally is to have them both in the correct direction, and both in the same direction. So I'm just going to hover over this uh, rail here. I'm going to right mouse click, say reverse rail. So now that they're both pointing in the same direction, so that when I select my cross section, it's going to come in at the top of both of those rails and be swept down. So let's come back into the form. I'm going to uncheck the option to scale cross sections with width. 
I'd like to set the combine mode of this component to merge. I'm going to rename that component and call that fold1, press apply and close. And we can see now we have a component that completely fills the area between those two rails. What we need to do now is look at cropping this component to this vector here. And this vector represents the top view of our banner. So what I need to do first is select my component. I can either select that in the 2D view, select it in the 3D view, or I could come over to the component tree and select it from there. Okay, so with that selected, I'm going to hold down Shift, select the vector that I'd like to crop the shape to, and then I'm going to come over and clear area of selected components outside selected vectors. And that's going to do as it says, it's going to clear everything outside of the vector that I've selected. So now we have um, a model that represents the top view of our first fold. And if we take a look at the model, we can see the shape of the cross section in there. Okay, So remember it was this vector here, and we've got that shape running through the model here. Let's put that back in C, and let's go and create the next fold. So we'll go back into the two rail sweep form. And I'm going to select my first vector for my first rail, shift and select my second one. I'm going to use the option use selection. Okay, they're both pointing in the same direction, so I'm happy with that. We'll come in and select our cross section, which is this vector here. I'm going to go with the same settings, make that set to merge, call that one fold two, press apply and I'm happy with that one there. Okay, so I'm confident that our vectors are set up correctly, so I'm just going to move on and create the uh, other two folds uh, using the two rail sweep. So I'm going to use this option, start new component, I'm going to select this rail here, shift and select this rail here, say so use selection, again they're both in the same direction so I'm happy with that, we'll select the cross section, it's set to merge, We'll name that one fold3, press apply, that's been put in there. We'll say start new component, select the vector here, shift and select this vector here. Say use selection, so it's now transformed those vectors into drive rails. We're going to go and select our cross section, which is this one here. Again, everything's still the same. We're just going to rename that and call that fold4. We'll press apply and then we can close the form. And so now we can start to look at cropping our shapes to the vectors that we've got in here. So I'm going to select my first fold, fold 2. I hold down shift, select the vector that I'd like to crop that component to. I'm going to come over into the modeling tools and we're going to use the option clear area of selected component outside selected vectors. And let's crop that there for us. We'll go in, select our next component, holding down shift. I'd like to select the vector that I'd like to crop that to. Back in, we're going to clear everything outside of that vector. And for the last one, we're going to select the component, hold down shift, select the vector we want to crop that to. And again, come in and clear area of selected components outside of that vector. And so we can see a little clearer how the vectors that were created in the previous session are ultimately used to create the banner components. Where we created the uh, vectors for our two rail sweep, where we had our drive rails, our cross sections, and we've cropped those back to these vectors uh, that we've got here, our cutout vectors, or the vectors that represent the top view of our banner, which we can see here if we put that in the Z view. And then if we just take a moment to look at those cross sections and then have a look in the up the y axis we can see those shapes uh, from the cross sections that we've got here. We can see them uh, in the actual 3D model. So that should make a little bit more sense as to how the two rail sweep works. Let's put that back in Z. And so this same technique can be used for any model that has this type of flow and folds in. For example, for flags or linen folds, banners for heraldry pieces, 
There's lots of applications that you can use this for and this same setup of vectors will work for that. It's just about the amount of folds that you have that will make it more or less complex. So to finish off I'd just like to do some smoothing to blend in some of the edges together and then we want to go and create the other half of our banner. Now before I do that what I'd like to do is insert a new level so I'm going to right mouse click over the folds level I'm going to use this option here insert a new level right mouse click and I'm just going to rename that level and I'm just going to call this level banner because what I'd like to do is create a new component from the components that we've got here so to do that I'm just going to make the banner level the active level it's bold so it's telling me that's the active level so if I create any more components they'll be added to this level here you can use this option here to create a component from visible model. Now when I select that, you can see it's created a component. If I just switch off the folds level, what it's done is created a baked copy of all the visible components that we had earlier. Okay, so now we have just one version here that I can go in and start editing. And then I know that I've got my safe versions of all those individual folds within the folds level. So I'm just going to minimize that level and then using the copy of visible model what I'd like to do is go in and start uh, smoothing some of those edges. So let's go and maximize the 3D view and then we'll go and use the option uh, sculpting. Okay, so I'm just going to put that in the Z view there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come around the entire part using the smooth tool just to soften all of those edges what we don't want to do is do any sculpting on this edge here as ultimately we're going to create a nice finished copy of the left hand side of the banner that will then look at mirroring and creating a copy on the other side so we don't want anything interfering with that join there so we're going to use the smooth options we're going to go with a diameter of around 150 I'm just going to go with a very low strength of around 910 now what I'm going to do is just using the left key on my mouse, I'm just going to come in and just go back and forth and that's going to activate that smooth. You can see that it's activated because my pen colour has changed in the 3D view to a red colour. If I switch off you can see it's now blue. If I go back in you can see it's red again. And all I'm doing is just going back and forth just softening those edges. Okay, So you can see a very subtle difference in there just keep going round until we're happy with the overall look of the part. Remember not to come up to the edge of that ribbon in the centre there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's press keep to accept those changes. I'm going to go into the twiddle view and then using the scroller of my mouse I'm just going to push that away from me to zoom in on my 3D view. Holding down control on the keyboard whilst pressing the left button on my mouse allows me to pan my view across. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is look at smudging material from one fold into the fold below. That's going to give me a more realistic look. So I'm just going to reduce the diameter of our smudge to around 70, 80, give that a strength of around 30. And all I'm going to do is just pull material down from one fold into another. So I'm just going to pull down okay, like that. Then I'm going to pull down on this area here until I'm happy uh, with the transition that we've got there. I might just push that up a little, I've altered the shape of that. And then we'll come in at the end over here and do the same for this side. Okay, so I'm just going back and click in and then clicking off and then coming back in again. Okay, so we can see we've created that crossover there. Okay, if we've gone into areas that you didn't want to sculpt, you can use the undo brush and then we can just go over and just undo that area that we didn't want to touch there. And I'm just going to go back in and smooth the edge of that part we just uh, applied the undo on. Okay, so I'm happy with that. 
let's just twiddle the view to take a look at that. If we twiddle that, we can see how these are transitioning into the folds below. And I think in hindsight I've done a bit too much smudging on there, so I'm just going to go back into the smudge tool and I'm just going to try and push that out a little just to alter the shape of that. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's say keep and OK. Put that back in the C view there. And now we can look at creating our mirrored copy on the other side. So I'm going to select our model. And then I'm going to say mirror selected objects. I'm going to flip about job center. We want to create a mirrored copy. And we want to flip that horizontally. Okay, so let's close that. We can see that there. We can currently see that both of those components combine modes are set to add. And what we want to do is set them to merge so that we have this nice smooth transition in the center. So I'm going to select both of those using the shift key. And then I'm going to right mouse click, say combine mode, set those to merge. We can see now we've got that nice smooth transition. And so to finish those off, what I'd like to do is just select both of those using shift, come over and apply a smooth filter over the two of those. So it's going to warn me that we need to bake that component. I'm happy to do that. I know that we've got all the individual folds within the folds level, so I don't need to worry about making this a permanent change. So I'm going to press OK. It's going to do that at a default of around 50%. What I'd like to do is just minimize that to around 25-30%. I'm happy with that. You can see we've got a nice smooth central area here now and the part looks finished. So I can press OK and then I'm going to select the component here. I'm just going to right mouse click and rename that and just call that Banner. So if you're interested in this sort of design, then it is worth noting that the clip art that comes with Aspire has a number of variations of this theme. There's lots of different ribbons and banners available, where you can import them as standalone 3D clip files, or you could look at open in the CLV 3D files, where you can access the vectors that were used to model the finished parts. And so that completes this tutorial, where we've created this banner using the vectors that we carefully constructed in a previous session. We've took those vectors, we've modelled the part using the two rail sweep. We then looked at finishing the part using the smooth filter and the sculpting tools. So at this stage it's a good idea to go and save the file. So let's go file, save as, and then in the project folder we're just going to call this one banner model. Save, and then we can access that from the project folder.